Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of July 8, 2018. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have not only a very active sky, but we have an important sky as well. And what is it that is so important this week? Well, it is the solar eclipse. It is the start of eclipse season, an extended eclipse season that will actually take us into next month. So let's focus on now. In the middle of the week, we are going to have a solar eclipse. And this solar eclipse will be happening in the sign of Cancer. It will be speaking in supreme harmony with Jupiter and Neptune and standing across the sky from Pluto. I'm very inspired by that Jupiter Neptune energy. I feel like this is very hopeful. I feel like this is very inspired and there's a almost a spiritual quality to it. Standing across the sky from Pluto, that can go a couple of different ways. That can be very intense and so just be mindful that a lot of people out there may this week feel like their emotions are on high, especially because it is a solar eclipse, which means a new moon, but as I like to say, a jacked up new moon, a new moon, but like 30 times more powerful. And so whenever there's important lunar activity in general, our emotions tend to flow, but you add to this, this is a solar eclipse. This is a new moon eclipse. Well, it makes it that much more heightened of an energy. Then you add Pluto into the mix and it can make for some pretty intense interactions with other people. Now, I've actually been thinking about lately, you know, the symbolism of Pluto, and I'll dive into it a lot more at some other time. But for now, I'll share this. With Pluto, I think that the symbolism represents a few things. And like any planet out there, there is a spectrum of understanding of any given planet. And I talk about this sometimes in my videos, right? So the higher understanding, or what we would judge as the higher understanding of Pluto, has to do with deep and profound healing on the one hand it has to do with things like psychoanalysis and being really honest with ourselves and moving through our pain so that we can experience authentic transformation it is a planet that represents rebirth in many ways and the whole psychology movement how it just kind of took over the world and these are some of the higher qualities of this planet but it also has some lower qualities of this planet as well and at the time of its discovery whenever a planet is discovered what will happen is astrologers will look around and see what's going on in the world and they'll consider the symbolism of the name of the planet and that will uh, begin to formulate its symbolism and so it was a pretty intense time okay in our human experience we saw people being very extreme with each other uh, we saw the first of the nuclear weapons and things like that and I'm not saying that that's happening at all right now okay but what I am saying is that this can be a pretty intense energy and at least on a more personal level on an individual level this can represent what you don't want to see it is your shadow essentially and what is our shadow well it's, our shadow is those parts of us within us that we don't want to own and so we project them onto other people and we see this very commonly when we project certain qualities onto groups of people based on you know what ultimately are very superficial qualities like their ethnicity or their race or their religion but there are of course more personal ways that we do this as well in our interactions and there are a few layers to this one is when we do this we're not seeing the person right we're seeing the world and we're seeing really ourselves that part of ourselves that we don't want to look at and we end up projecting it on to this person. And we'll also do this in particular situations, right? We'll uh, say somebody, we'll call them a name in our head and we'll say, oh my God, I can't believe how that person is behaving without owning the fact that given a certain circumstance, that might very well be us, right? And given all the different things that happened to make us who we are today, if any of those things had not happened, that may very well be us. I remember years ago, a friend of mine, you know, telling me that she went on this trip and there were, uh, you know, right outside where she was staying, there were so many uh, people very hardly addicted, very uh, profoundly addicted to drugs. And uh, she was saying like, oh my God, there are all these drug addicts out there. And I was like, yeah, but really, 
like what's the difference like what's the difference between you and this person and this is a very accomplished person that I said this to um, but I think she got what I was saying as I fleshed it out a little bit that basically there are essentially very small things that add up to a lot of bigger things that make us who we are and so I do think that the, the planet of Pluto in many ways represents our shadow, represents that part of us that we project onto others, that we reject, and we don't want to own are actually a part of us. The work of Carl Jung is a big part of how we understand the shadow today. And Carl Jung said that enlightenment is not found by playing with figures in the light. It is only when we turn around and face our dark. And essentially what he meant was, we have to have that integration. When we own those things within us that we reject, we're able to be more complete and whole human beings. And he didn't say this, but I've heard it said, there's a bit of good in the worst of us and a bit of bad in the best of us. So here we are at this eclipse in the sign of cancer. And the sign of cancer is one of a very sort of base identity. So it's an identity based on uh, nationality, an identity based on ethnicity. So these are very tribal, like our, our roots, particularly our ancestral roots or whatever we consider that to be. That's the sign of Cancer. And then you have standing across the sky from this Pluto. And this to me is, I must say, it looks like in our own individual journeys, in our own lives, we may end up saying to ourselves as we're moving through our life, oh, that's not me, this is me, this is who I am, and associate ourselves with sort of enlightened but ultimately very tribal descriptions instead of acknowledging that actually we are looking in a mirror. That's how I see oppositions actually playing out. Ultimately, when two planets stand across the sky from each other, it is an opportunity to see ourselves more clearly. And this is why in a lot of my horoscopes, when there is important activity happening in your opposite sign, right? Like, for example, the sign of Cancer is opposite to, is across the zodiac from Capricorn. So for Capricorn, I used the phrase, you can see in the monthly horoscopes, I talk about this in the superstar horoscopes as well. I use the phrase to see yourself more clearly as reflected in the eyes of another. So what do I mean by that? And I like to use that phrase. I read it in one of my philosophy books like when I was an undergrad and I don't remember who said it and I don't remember exactly how it was phrased, but that was the gist of it and that's what I picked up. So what is it? Essentially, when a planet stands across the sky from another planet and when we are interacting with other people, what tends to happen is this is what's called an opposition and what tends to happen is one person will take on the characteristics or the role represented in one planet and the other will become the other planet so we will project what's happening in an opposition when it is pluto involved in that opposition the likelihood of projection is that much stronger the likelihood of projecting our shadow becomes that much stronger and when you have an eclipse there's a real opportunity here to see it, to recognize it, to have, like as Oprah would say, an aha moment, right? To have this light bulb moment where you realize, oh my God, I am projecting something that I don't want to own. I don't want to acknowledge where it is that maybe I'm not so enlightened. So here's our opportunity. Now we may play this out in a collective sense, right? This can happen in the world. And we hope that it always remains as loving as possible. And we may play this out in our individual journeys as well. So my advice would be, if you find yourself using this energy in that way, if it shows up for you in this way, remember that grand trine, because that grand trine of Jupiter and Neptune and this solar eclipse, what that is saying is wisdom can be found if we are willing to look for it. We can find a way to move towards a path of greater hope and greater love and greater wisdom, particularly universal love, if we are willing to look for it. And maybe you'll have to do it on your own. Maybe it is that you're not gonna get someone else to participate in this, right? Particularly if it's the person where this dynamic is playing out or the situation or the institution, right? Or the organization, because we have a way of playing these different things out in a different context but ultimately the spiritual lesson is the same so where is it in your life that you can decide 
that when you see yourself projecting, when you see yourself saying these people are this way, and when you see that, or when you see yourself projecting onto an individual, this person is always this way, this is this type of person, whatever that may be, where is it that you can bring in some of that wisdom and bring in some of that universal love of Jupiter and Neptune? Because that will be the real opportunity, but also that will be the real healing as well. This grand trine, Jupiter, Neptune, and this eclipse can be supremely healing. The only thing is that Pluto energy is the stronger energy in the sky. The ancients would say, however far out a planet was, the more dominant its energy was. So the further out it was, the slower moving it was, its energy became that much more pronounced in the individual chart, but also for us as a collective. So where is it that we can resist that temptation to go in that direction to make someone else the bad guy in our lives? And where is it instead that we can say, okay, you know what, this person is reflecting something back to me. Now, what can I learn about myself? How can I use the situation to actually move towards greater love and greater wisdom? And so what do I mean by greater love and greater wisdom? Well, look, eclipses are a great time to understand this more deeply because they are a time that opens up a spiritual portal that the ancients said the veils between the worlds were especially thin. So we're able to access our own wisdom. We're able to access eternal wisdom and I do believe that ultimately, if we're going to eternal wisdom, we're going to love. That's the bottom line. We're going to something that is divine. I like to call it love and wisdom. People call it different things. So where is it that you can use any given situation to actually elevate yourself to actually move towards greater love and greater wisdom? Well, here's the thing. Very often it's work, right? As the Carl Jung uh, saying implied, if we're happy and we're going along and everything's easy breezy and everything's smooth, we are not necessarily going to do that work to reflect. We're not necessarily going to be motivated to look in that mirror and we're not necessarily going to be willing to be really honest with ourselves because we have no motivation to do it. Ultimately, when we have important and strong energy that makes us look at ourselves. It's because there is something that isn't feeling right. It's because there is something that is feeling uncomfortable. And that is the spiritual tool of the human experience to move us forward and to move us towards greater love and greater wisdom. Now, interestingly, elsewhere in the sky, we are going to have right out of the gate, Mercury entering shadow, Mercury enters shadow and will go on and reach out to Jupiter. I do believe that this conversation that Mercury is having with Jupiter is going to be a defining characteristic of this Mercury retrograde season. So it is going to be late this month that Mercury will officially go retro and then in the middle of August will go direct and it will be right around September the 2nd, give or take a day on either side, that Mercury will leave shadow. That is the extended Mercury retrograde season that we are starting right out of the gate as we start this week. Now, what is also going to be happening is that this week, Mercury will speak with Jupiter and it will be right around the middle and also the very end of August that this conversation will be repeated. So these two planets are essentially in a dance, an extended dance that will define this Mercury retrograde season. This is a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. It is a conversation of some tension and it's also a conversation of motivation. Now, what's interesting is this Mercury retrograde season is going to happen entirely in the sign of Leo. And of course, Jupiter is in the sign of Scorpio. Both of these are fixed signs. I do believe that the fixed signs and what that means is they're in the middle of the season. Okay. So when we have a cardinal sign, it starts the season. That's where the sun is now in the sign of cancer. It started summer in the Northern hemisphere, and that represents uh, the beginning. So it's a sign that initiates. And then we have the fixed signs that hold the season. And then we have the uh, signs that culminate the seasons, which is the mutable signs. And that ultimately is a very changing energy. And I actually explained this in my book, Astrology Realized. But having said that, what's interesting is I do believe that the fixed signs in many ways are very concerned with authenticity. Like they care a lot about being 
true to themselves and not selling out and being real with themselves. And the uh, fixed signs are Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, and Aquarius. So each of these signs in their own way have this quality to them. So what happens when you have these two planets, right? Mercury on the one hand, which is moving really fast in the sign of Leo. The sign of Leo has to do with things like celebrity. It has to do with confidence as well. It has to do with putting on a show of being seen, unapologetically seen. And it is speaking with Scorpio, Jupiter and Scorpio at that. And of course, the sign of Scorpio has to do with moving beyond the superficial, getting to the substance, getting to the core, realizing what's essential and what really matters and just getting rid of anything else. Well, these two planets speaking with each other, it does look like there's going to be some sense of internal questions around these matter. Collectively, we'll see this as well. We should notice ourselves sort of reaching for truth and what's the real deal and what's the essence, that's the Scorpio energy. And you know, what's the show? What's on display? That's gonna be part of the characteristic of these coming weeks. And you know, it is a Mercury retrograde. So just when we think we know the answer, we realize we missed something. So it's important to pay attention to what is happening right now because this is where Mercury will return to in the middle of August when he slows down to a standstill, retrograde, slows down to a standstill and moves forward. And whatever it is that transpires in your life right now, wherever it is that you're finding yourself having to address this notion of what's real, what's at the essence, what is it that really matters and what is being shown to the world? How confident am I really? What am I confident about? Uh, where are we gonna put on a show? Where are we gonna celebrate celebrity? And what's at the core of that celebrity? These are questions for the collective, but they're also questions for us individually as well. In the process, we may have to look at some of our fears. We may have to look at some of our overindulgences and overconfidence. However, this ultimately will help us move beyond that energy of doubt into something that feels more essential and something that feels more certain. Now, finally, if all of that wasn't enough, this week Venus is also gonna change signs early in the week and will immediately speak in supreme harmony with Uranus. And as we finish the week, we'll speak in supreme harmony with Saturn. This is what's called a grand trine, okay? So this is beautiful, supremely harmonious energy, easy energy playing out here. And I am very excited about this. With Venus moving into the sign of Virgo, love gets a lot more sensual, it becomes a lot more grounded, and it becomes a lot more about, okay, what are you showing me? Love is in the details, as they say, right? So where is it that I'm seeing that love in the details? And the details are gonna be hard to actually uh, reconcile with if they're not matching up with some sense of a higher ideal. Well, the great thing is because ultimately this energy is supremely harmonious between Venus and these other planets, well, what I'm seeing is delight, surprise, right? Any kind of romantic declarations can actually go very well this week. I know sometimes I tell you, you know, when it's not gonna go well, I say, look, avoid romantic declarations. Well, this week, have at it, enjoy yourself, go ahead. And there may be that intensity in the air as well, so realize that with that eclipse happening right under the same sky. However, there's also this energy of romantic delight with us. Now, as we move later into the week, we've got Saturn, but we'll be feeling this energy very closely, kind of all together. And so whatever it is that ends up delighting us, whatever romantic surprises we give others or they give to us, will be part of creating a solid foundation and ultimately lending itself to greater stability. Now, ordinarily, when I see energy like this, I would tell people, you know, go and, you know, have fun with your look and uh, get a new wardrobe, new hair, new hair color, um, you know, even something more permanent like tattoos and things like that. However, Mars is retrograde right now. And so I just want you to be a little bit mindful because Mars retrograde can work a couple of different ways for people where it comes to doing something more permanent um, especially something that you know pierces the skin like a tattoo or other types of needles as well as part of improving your or at least not improving but you know whatever it is that feels right for you to do more power to you okay but the thing is because mars is retrograde for some people mars retrograde works really well 
for little procedures and uh, you know any kind of surgical stuff you know any kind of cutting into the skin for some people depending on your chart a Mars retrograde can work well for that but depending on your chart as well sometimes a Mars retrograde doesn't work well for that and you end up getting something different than you anticipated or there's a need to go back and do it again uh, not too far into the future once that Mars goes direct so here are some things to keep in mind with this um, I have found that if you have um, particularly water energy but particularly Scorpio energy in your chart strong Scorpio themes uh, whether that's a strong Pluto in your chart or a lot of uh, Scorpion energy in your chart you're going to do better with the Mars retrograde if you are someone who is born under a Mars retrograde also you're going to do better with things like little procedures and things that you could do or you know surgery tends to go better as compared to the other signs so it does involve looking at your chart and knowing a little bit about your chart it's not just about your sun sign um, it goes beyond that like really recognizing the symbolism of the chart to decipher whether or not having any kind of procedure during a Mars retrograde is going to be okay for you because for some it can go exceptionally well for others really not and so these are some things to keep in mind also keep in mind you know look at your chart where's Neptune right now where's Jupiter right now how are they aspecting other planets in the chart because this is going to tell you how accurately your expectations are how accurately you're seeing things rather and how accurate your expectations are so I know I put on my astro nerd hat there for a moment so I'm sorry if I got a little too technical for people but I hope that that was helpful and ultimately look Venus is about love it's about joy it's about pleasure so I hope that you do something that maximizes the joy and the pleasure and the fun in your life because ultimately that is the thing I do believe this with all my heart that is the thing that maximizes our energy that can be described and can be identified as most beautiful what I love about this week for us well look there's a lot going on I promised you a very busy astrological week so there's so much going on in the sky right now and there's so much to love right but I gotta say it really is the eclipse I know that eclipses can be dramatic they can be important certainly they are very revealing right they certainly uh, have us having that moment where we all of a sudden we get it the penny drops as they say however eclipses also put us into alignment as part of the mystery in alignment with a higher more loving vision for your life and so that is part of what I love about this week for us and I must say I love that Venus as well but at the end of the day it is the whole cosmos and all of the universe that has my love well thank you so much for watching I'm so grateful for it please like comment subscribe share thumbs up it means so much it truly does and if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff speaks to you for your sign log on to astrofabulous.com or nadiashaw.com sign up to be one of my superstars superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week and so much more and limited access to special horoscopes and early access to monthly horoscopes and much much more all of that in the superstar space i look forward to meeting you there i also want to send a big burst of gratitude thank you to all of you who've been with me with my technical difficulties happening with my videos i just thank you for your love and your support so much i have like this strong core of people who's always watching who's always there and I love you for it or if this is the first time you're watching if you just watch once in a while that's cool too thank you so much for being here so new mic uh, I'm going back to my original program because I think it was the program I was using that was screwing up the audio and let's see how it goes I am settling down from my nomadic year this last year of my life has been particularly nomadic I mean it's been a joy in many ways it's been a lot of fun I've lived in all kinds of different places and spaces but now I'm feeling like okay I want to be in one spot for a little while and I want to have a desk and I want to just create a space where I can uh, focus right I mean look I can always focus I can sit on a sofa and be very happy to do the horoscopes uh, but it's nice to actually start to you know feel like I'm putting down some roots right that I'm creating a solid ground and so I hope those improvements that come in the weeks and months ahead I hope that they are evident 
and I want to say thank you. Thank you again for this moment with you. And my hope for all of us is that we use this energy well. We use this energy to in some way uncover ourselves, to own ourselves, to own our reactions. And in that, find a true source of strength and power within. And it is a power that runs within all of us. It is a power that unites us. It is a power of love and wisdom. Well, thank you again. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.